Hey everybody, today we are going to look at cleaning this Optima HD20. It came in with a complaint that it would run for a few minutes, the colors would start flickering, and then it would shut down. As you can see here, it's got a decent set of jacks on the back. Uh, I've already removed most of the screws to get inside. I don't believe I need to remove those three on the back, but it was just kind of go through and take them all out. So you can see I took the, uh, the door off, lamp is out. You can actually see there's quite a bit, quite a bit of dust. This was black from burnt dust when I opened it up. So I, I really expect the problem to be with the color wheel with dirt all over it. So, uh, so you all know I took out that screw, that screw, that screw. And then I took out the ones in the back. But it just kind of pops apart. The only other thing you have to know how to do is pop this off. You can see those little guys there are what latch on to these little screws. You don't necessarily have to take this off, but I find to take a chance of snapping the case if you don't. So aside from that, it's just a matter of popping the seam. And then there's a ribbon cable that I've already disconnected right here that goes under there. So I'll usually pop the back up, kind of set it so I can get in here, unhook that, and then take the top off. There's the zoom. That lines up with this pin, and then that's the focus. Color wheels in here. It does seem really dirty. You can see over here there's a bunch. So I think it just needs a good cleaning. Oh yeah, we got a one of these famous things snapping off. Seems to be a known issue. Oh yeah. Came off of here, so we'll fix that. So I'm gonna spend a little time on this. You can see that that's cracked. What happens is the plastic gets hot dries out it gets brittle and uh, just the stress of the top being screwed down can cause that plastic to split I do a little thing to fix it where I'll cut this down a little bit further just the ribs on the side I'll glue it and then put some shrink tubing and that'll hold it all in place well, that'll be after everything's cleaned you can see this thing's filthy so let's set the case over the top over here spin it around so we can really look yeah there's a lot of dust in here yeah all right so the next thing I'm going to do is take this whole assembly out release that and then the sensor so those wires are released, so I'll have to take out that screw and that screw, and then I can take the whole assembly out and look at the sensor. To remove the color wheel, like I said, I'm just going to take out these two screws. And of course, the screws are going in there. Uh, I'm going to pause it, though, because once I loosen that screw, this whole thing is going to be loose, and I don't want a chance at falling and chipping the wheel. So hang on a second. Here we go now the color wheels out. You can see here that it's made up of multiple pieces into the sub assembly. We have a two pole stepper motor that spins that. You have a, just a shield here to keep extra light from getting in towards the sensor and then it's kind of hard to see but that little black rectangle with the two lines, the two leads coming out of it, that's the sensor. It's an infrared transmitter receiver that reflects light off of the hub until that black mark comes around. And that black mark goes past, it causes a pulse called the index pulse, and that's how the projector knows what color segment is in front of the optical path at that point. Being that this is a DLP, lamp goes in here, light shines out through that little aperture through the color wheel that guy 
then into the integrator or light tunnel as it's sometimes called. It's four mirrors in a rectangle shape that cause the light to be reflected towards the center. I think they're first surface mirrors too, I can't quite remember. Lamp blower fan in there, then the optical assembly uh, DLP chip is in there. I'll probably take this board out so we can clean everything. But for now I think the issue at hand is in there, in that little circuit board. So I'll take that board out and then we can look at it. And that's out. There's the sensor. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Of course not. Come on. There we go. That's, uh, oops. Frustrating. Okay, there we are. It's got dust on it. Now, the light doesn't always hit it the right way, but there's dust on. I guess from this vantage point, the uh, left side has a little bit more than the right, but I think I bumped it. But that's enough to cause it not to work. So it's actually a pretty simple fix just for this. I'm just going to clean the dust off that and put it back together. That would get it up and running. However, I don't want to just get it up and running. I want to get it reliable. So I'm going to take it over. Once I take it down a little more, I'm going to take it out to the... Uh, air compressor area and just kind of hit it with some semi-pressurized air to blow all that dust out. Then I'll put it all back together and it should run great. So first I'll clean this, get a Q-tip and clean that off and then take that out and start cleaning the rest of it. So I'll uh, show you once I have the board out. That's clean now. Let's see if I can get it to focus this close. Yeah. Now it's clean. It's ready to go back on the color wheel. So as I said, I'm going to take this stuff apart so we can clean the rest of the projector and then we'll reassemble the color wheel and go from there. Here's the lamp that came out of it. You can see dust there, dust there. This is actually pretty bad. Um, this much dust inside a projector usually leads to early failures. Surprisingly, this lamp has a decent amount of time on it. I think that's more of a more of a nice thing to say about the quality of an Osram bulb than anything else. It does have a decent amount of airflow being forced into it. This is the blower fan that feeds the air into the lamp, although it is pretty cruddy. What will happen here is this dust will start to build up inside on those veins and it makes the efficiency of the air movement much, much, much lower. So that was why I actually took this out. I'm gonna, might even split the casing on it and clean it, but I'm gonna try just blowing it off first. That usually takes care of it, but rather than doing it in the projector, I took it out so I can make sure it has the attention it needs. Uh, this fan is just kind of a general airflow across everything. It keeps the power supply cool, pulls air across the ballast, and works with the fan. But this one's specifically for the fan. Actually, when it's inside, there's uh, this piece here lines up in there. So that essentially is forcing air directly into the lamp to keep it cool, and then it vents out on that side. So the next thing I'm going to do now that this is torn down well enough for me, is I'm going to go and clean it out with an air compressor. So you can get a good look at it now. See all the dust. And then when you see it next, it'll be nice and clean. And here we go. Everything's nice and clean. No more dust caked onto there. No more dust caked in here. And then we have the lamp. The lamp, she doesn't look as terrible now. I gotta clean that lens off, but this will at least fire back up until they're ready to either replace the lamp or put a new one in. Now, there's a little bit on there. But I got the most of it out. What'll happen is the dust will get in there and it gets burned into, not burned into the glass, but burned onto the glass. 
got the blower fan nice and clean that turned out great so now it'll move air more efficiently and cool down that lamp much better and then in here I got all that cleaned out so now when it moves air through it'll move it through as efficiently as it can so now I uh, put it back together and give it a test and just before I put this all back together I figure we can look at the components we have the power supply this is the main AC power supply 110 to 240 volts goes in here goes through a whole bunch of filtering then it connects to this wire which is a thermal cutoff when this reaches a certain temperature in a hundred degrees C or so maybe a hundred and actually I think I'm wrong on that there might be 170 but once it reaches a certain temperature it opens the circuit and will shut the power supply off under here is a big filter capacitor that's where the power factor correction is that sends its high voltage higher voltage out to the ballast it's coming out here through that wire it's roughly 400 volts 390 around there so that goes in there that's the 400 dc in goes through the ballast ballast pumps it up to a higher voltage to a couple thousand to start the lamp it comes in through these wires to the connector and we have the control lines to the ballast that's for turning it on and off adjusting brightness wire for the fan wire for that blower fan infrared for the remote control and then we have the color wheel bits and they all connect to the main board this is the main board on the other side of those squares are the BGA chips for the DLP driver kind of see them in there and then just a bunch of power supply stuff conditioning stuff other controllers for things the uh, trying to find the chip for the color wheel I think it might be that Nuvaton chip there but I'm not a hundred percent I'd have to look it up usually it's a big chip like that it also might be on the other side might be in there somewhere but I this might be it I'll have to look it up but either way that's the main board that runs everything that's uh, the uh, low voltage input that comes from this wire here that's the low voltage output of the main power supply 5 volts 12 volts 3 volts etc so I'll get this board put back in get some screws put back in and I'll be right back and the main board is now seated so I'll put that screw back in after I put the shielding on top have all those wires plugged back in now I'm going to put the color wheel back together and get that back installed so that all the wires are reconnected and all the screws are back in for the top color wheel back in place wires are reconnected tuck them back in a little now before I fix that broken piece there I'm going to hook this back up just so we can test it out with the lamp reinstalled and of course I have to install the cover there we go I have the uh, let's see. yep we have standby light turn off the light above me and then we should get yep green light color wheel spins up light comes on we should yep yeah, we got a picture coming out of there fans are running hmm blower fans not running though that's interesting that should be spinning I might kick on there it goes okay so it's timed or waiting for a temperature good well this is a good sign let's see if we have anything 
on my amazing uh, screen here. <laughs> there we are, HDMI 1, no signal. There's the menu. What do we got here? Display test pattern. All right, this is just a crosshatch. Might be a little easier to see on there. Let's see if there's any other ones. White. That's actually a good one. We'll see if that color wheel acts up at all. All right, I'm going to let this run for a little bit. If I have any problems, I'll fire the camera back up so you can all see what's going on. Uh, hopefully the next clip you see is me putting this all back together with the last screws after I uh, fix that piece on the top. All right, still running, holding that white screen nicely. I'm going to look at getting this ready to be fixed. What I'm going to try and do is add some glue, but I'll also use shrink tubing to kind of sleeve the two together. It should be the right size and should shrink enough. So what I'll do is I'm going to disconnect the top and then I'll clean up the stands, a little post, and I'll show you how I do that. So here's the broken piece. And yes, the projector can run without the keyboard plugged in. That is called a keyboard. I'm going to need to put this back on. I'm going to line it up so that the those pieces line up with where they're supposed to mate under here but I'm going to trim these little side pieces back so that the shrink tubing can slide over most of it. I'll just use my low profile side cutters now normally I would not recommend doing this if your projector was new but the this projector I think is oh geez six seven maybe eight years old Good. So then, piece of this. Let me get my scissors. And there we go. That's the little piece. I have to get the glue, but just to kind of show you what's going to happen. And then I'll shrink it. Once I shrink it with the glue, That'll make that a very solid piece and should not pull apart. I looked at the other ones. This one's starting to dry and crack a little bit, so I might cut a little piece just to put around to keep the plastic from dropping off. Uh, but that one looks fine. I'm going to leave that one alone. So I'll do that. I'm going to add a little piece on here to help hold that one together, too. There's a little piece I'm going to add. That'll keep it from getting worse. You can see it's starting to crack a little. It'll end up like that eventually if I don't do anything. So this one, like I said, it'll get a little bit of glue underneath it. I'll shrink that and then that'll be solid. Do the same thing there. Maybe a little bit of glue as well and shrink that and that one will be solid. Then I can put the top back on. This has been running for about 15, almost 20 minutes now. And uh, it's running well definitely dirty so let me glue and shrink these and I'll be right back all right and I actually like to use my hot air rework iron for shrink tubing because I can really focus where the heat goes you can see how well that works And we'll do that one. I did put a little drop of glue in it. Just so once it shrinks, it's nice and tight. Get in there from the side. Get it nice and tight. 
All right. That looks good to me. Feels good. Feels good. All right, the top's ready to go back on. Now the top's back on. Need to put the uh, focus ring back on. There's those little catches that line up with those screws. So I just line those up and push it on. Oop, almost. There we go, right there. Did I get that? Oh, good, and I did get that. Or did I not? Nope. Always be pay attention to where that is, because now it's not doing the zoom. So I got to pop the front up and then get that back over top of that. Can't do that one-handed. Okay, got that. Focus ring is good. Bloop, 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 bloop. Focus and zoom. There we go. All right, I'm going to shut it down. And then I will put the screws in. So, be right back. And then to show you where these screws go, there's only three of them, so it's uh, not that hard. You got one, two, oh, that'll tighten in once the screw's tight, and then the one that I fixed back here, number three. Screws are back in. Everything's back together. I'm gonna clean the lens, see if I can wipe this stuff off, and then it's all ready to go back to the customer. So that's how you clean, or what you need to do when you clean, an Optima HD20. Similar to other Optimas, uh, you can pretty much use the same process for any projector. Uh, this one just happened to be specific for the HD20. So, as usual, thanks for watching.